B. So I'm going to go one by one the mistakes done by beginners, and that is the few things. So first mistake what I've seen is doing pointless internship. I, I've seen, I've heard this a lot. I did a three month internship, still didn't get job. Is that you? So the key point here is that doing an internship without a purpose or a value is as good as doing no internship at all. I see a lot of people like they are in a community college, they're doing some kind of internship. And if you ask them why you did the project, they have no answer. Like last year I was trying to hire a web developer and that time uh, she was had a decent profile and she was saying me, okay, uh, there is a, for example, she did a like on a, uh, what is this react on react framework, she developed a application. I just simply asked one thing. Why did you choose react? Why not angular? She had no answer. She said, uh, because my instructor said, use it. That's it. So this is the problem. Like what it means that you, you, you developed an application and you don't know even why you chose that application. That is a disastrous answer for any interview. Second thing I was okay, this thing, how, how can I do this? Okay, so pretty much in five, first five to 10 minutes of interview, I realized that she may have had a good intention, but the internship which was given to her, the way the guidance were given, it was disastrous. The instructor didn't give her real, real reason why you are choosing a React over Angular. That is the first thing. Second, in React, what you can do, what you cannot do. So that kind of internship, which was a valueless, like I will say disheartened internship, you spend three months, actually you're wasting your three months. And many times I see people do internship which doesn't align with their career. Then eventually she was saying, I'm interested in something else, but just because I got this internship free or whatever, I just did it. I said, you just wasted your time, right? If you don't have interest into that. And plus, if you don't pursue yourself going forward into this field, why are you doing this internship? You're just wasting your time. For example, someone says, I know how to ride a motorbike and can I can you give me a four wheeler license? It is like that. So if you did a web developer internship, nobody's going to offer you a cloud job, forget it. So you have to always think what is the strategically important for your internship and go for it. And another thing is that uh, don't do internship where the mentor is not invested with you. Mentor doesn't have a vested interest in your success rather than just getting there some job done. Don't do that internship, you're wasting your time. So I will say right now, first thing you should do that. Mistake number two, choosing after the job description. This is a lot of people do that, a lot of people. For example, just giving a very prominent example. This is a job description I pulled from LinkedIn. And you can see this job description has pretty much whole world of technology. And if I want to break it up, the technology, I can see these, pretty much these kind of skill set you need. And by the way, each and every skill set that you see, it takes months to master. You can see Amazon Web Services, Python, Linux, Jenkins, Docker, Ansible. I mean, it's just a plethora of technology. And to be very honest, a lot of technology, I don't even know, I never heard of it. But there, it is in the job description and what does, it actually, it actually blows away most of the candidate. They think, oh my God, I'm not eligible, I'm not this. But remember one thing, you have been misled that you don't need to know everything for a job description. So a lot of people say job description is a lie because you only need to subset of job description in order to do your job. For example, if you go to yeah, like your driving test, right? Driving test, they ask everything. They ask, how did you parallel parking? How can you do a lane change? This, this. Assume your requirement is just going from here to grocery store and you don't have a street parking. You will not be using your parallel parking skills. You will not be using lane change. So those things are, I will say, whatever you see in the big. So what is the red? You see red is the skill in the job description, but the blue one is actually the job that you need. You will be doing in the job and that is the job, that is the skill set is needed to get you hired. So the number of skills that is actually needed, it is much smaller than what you see in the job description. So first thing, you must be thinking why the job descriptions are so crazy because they are simply a wish list and they don't reflect the real hiring requirement. Because what? They want to hire a unicorn, but they will be more than happy to hire a simple stallion. So that is what it is like a, your, you know, dream something. For example, you're looking for a dream home. For example, someone is looking to buy a house in Toronto. What do you want? I want a house in a, maybe in a reasonable budget in a downtown Toronto. Guess what? It's not possible. You have to compromise. Either you have to go to a smaller house. You, if you want to downtown or you want a bigger house, you have to go out of the city. So similar way, employer also do these kind of compromise and they hire a person. So here is what you, what you need. 
of course you need to understand the basic skill a lot of people they just don't know basic skill that is a very very disastrous thing for example the same example i will say the react developer and that person didn't know what is http get and put what is different between put and post so if you call yourself a web developer and if you don't know about http protocol i mean that is a killer right so that is the most important thing you need to know the basic skill second you have to pick one or two super skill and just invest your time on that and that is the key and that skill will kill you well that skill will give you the killer job that you're looking for and last but not the least is the ability to learn the job so basically that's what will set you apart from everybody else that will create you basically that that will create a leverage during the interview but again interview doesn't expect you to know everything but if they know you know one thing so well and that skill can solve their technical or a business problem boom you are getting it so you have to identify or you need help by some mentor to identify your power skill and focus on that so pick any skill for example db linux python i'm just giving some example just pick any one of it and you have to show that how that skill is going to help solve technical problem of your employer right so another thing nobody knows all the skills nobody does most skill you will learn on the job but you need to know base stack of skill that is mandatory for example if you are good at python you have to show how is your killer python skill will help them to get away with some of the technical challenges right show your show your ability to learn new things give some examples this is the the third mistake third mistake it is a very very i will say is widespread learning academy and bookish knowledge that's what pretty much goes back to the writing sample code pretty much what i see people okay you are learning from someone or something it i have seen people who have never delivered any project in their life and they are teaching how to create a highly available cloud architecture it is just not possible if you haven't delivered anything on the real life how can you teach someone for example uh, someone doesn't know driving okay they don't know how to drive a car and that person is your driving instructor and the guess what even worse that person who is teaching you they learned by playing on a simulator like a video game kind of thing so that is what i'm saying so people know the skill i have seen a lot of tremendous good people like they understand a little bit technology they know sample project for something but the problem is the moment you throw a real world problem even the simplest one they just stumble and that is what the interview are looking for they are not looking for as someone they will sit and you will working you will next one year you will learn and something you have to show them you have ability to learn and biggest thing how you can how you can take a problem and break into a smaller smaller technical problem that is what they are looking for how you can create a building block and the moment you can show that you take a real problem and you are able to break into a technical or a technological problem then they know this person gets it and that is the killer skill you are looking for a lot of time people get a tips from people they don't walk the same walk what i mean is that someone was for example i saw one person was giving advice about how to enter into computer science but if i see that person's profile that person was a bachelor of computer science from stanford guess what stanford okay the top of the university and then you did master then you did phd because you if you never had a had that kind of problem that only you did a, some other education or something like that and you are struggling you can never ever see the same that's what i say getting tips from the people who don't walk the same walk as you do so for example i i come from absolutely i did a from very simple university not very big university and i did in electronics and communication back in 2004 that time only computer i know how to create my resume even badly so you have to listen to someone who has actually gone through the same pain a lot of time people say okay education is not needed guess what that person is howard educated yeah you of course you can say that but ask someone who didn't have the education it is does it hold true or not second i see a lot of people they call themselves expert but they are actually linkedin celebrities if you see their profile you will see actually they are media person they are media person writers or celebrity they have never ever been a software person or never wrote a code in their whole life they are they are celebrities they are not so listening to them something could be misleading mistake number 4 bad resume strategy this is also a like very bad a lot of people do that first thing this one exactly i did i did bombarding resume to the recruiters and expecting job will simply land so like it's the same like you are doing a carpet bombing if you doing doing carpet bombing believe me your resume is going to the just their trash folder and they are never going to look good right 
So you have to always create a leverage in your resume. You have to, you have to identify the keyword. You have to identify a lot of things. Second mistake I see, copy pasting others resume. That is the last thing you should do ever. Never ever copy paste someone else's resume. And this has happened with me last month. I want to hire an AWS person and I saw that uh, his resume, it was pretty good. He had certification and all this thing. I just asked, I didn't know much. So I just asked the, the first line he mentioned something on the, I said, what does he do? Tell me about it. And he had no answer of it. I, I asked about the second line. He didn't have answer either. And eventually I realized that person had just copy pasted someone else's resume and didn't even bother to read and learn about it. So that is even more desire. Imagine this, this shows lack of, lack of seriousness. How, e, how, I mean, I will say casual you are in your approach in a resume building. Assume if you are having such kind of a lousy resume you are giving, how do you expect a hiring manager going to spend their time, read and go through it? And there is another secret to the industry. A lot of people don't know. They will, th uh, when you send a resume, you think that someone else will read your resume. Nobody reads your resume to begin with. Hiring manager had hardly five minutes because hiring managers, they are usually very busy. They are meeting after meeting after meeting. So for example, I'm doing any hiring. I have a meeting from 10 to 11. 11 o'clock, I have an interview. During the whatever one, two minute, minute of gap, I'll just pull up the resume. I will see few lines. I'll see what I can understand. And boom, I'll throw the question. And that person stumble on the first question. It means what? That person copy paste the resume. So if you don't value your own resume, how do you expect a hiring manager going to value your resume? So that is like a slap on the face of the, of the hiring manager. So basically you, you don't value your time and you expect the hiring manager going to read and understand you. So this is, you should never do always author your resume and write in a very simple English so that people can understand. So these are the few tips. For example, if you like simple formatting, using a bullet is a very good thing. This is an example. I will say someone says, I build a CI CD pipeline on AWS. It doesn't say anything. To be very honest, it means you are copy pasted or you don't know what you're doing. But now you explain the good style will be build a CI CD pipeline for a highly available Kafka cluster to process millions of streaming data using Jenkins Kubernetes and fully deployment using Terraform on AWS. So that highlights okay, this person is knows what they, he's doing, he or she is doing. They know what they're talking. So that is what the difference, the moment someone sees, okay, this person knows these skills. The first resume, it right away, it goes through a crash. Nobody's gonna read. Make sure your resume is readable, like uh, make sure it's like a five grade readable, like very simple. As I said, hiring manager only has few minutes of time to go through your resume. It has to be very simple and it must match the keyword. That is the killer. Mistake number five, lousy online portfolio. I mean, when I'm saying online, don't think I'm talking about your Tinder profile or your Instagram profile. It may be very cool, but in today's tech world, like anything else, like if you're going for a dating or you're going for anything, Facebook profile, your Instagram profile, they has to be very good. You take very nice photo and everything. But what happens when it comes to your LinkedIn and GitHub profile? See, if some potential employer is looking for you and you have no experience, how they're going to validate that you are a real person or not? The only way they can validate is a social proofing. It means you should have a very decent LinkedIn profile and a decent GitHub profile. And today's world, the online image is more important than your real image, by the way. So, so I'll start with the GitHub strategy. So for GitHub strategy, I will say create two project portfolio and finish and, and those projects should be showcasing your super skill and make your project presentable, well-documented, easy to understand. It's very much like resume. Consider your GitHub profile as a resume. Make it a nice clean. And in your resume, highlight that particular thing that you did and how your super skill is going to help your organization. And always it should be well-documented and articulated. LinkedIn strategy. LinkedIn strategy, first thing I will say, please take a nice photo. Please take a decent photograph. I see a lot of people don't even bother to put a photograph. There is a typo, there is a spelling mistake in your name or something. That is a really, uh, I will say, not to do. So first thing, copy your experience from resume, copy paste to LinkedIn, create a summary. And the summary should always highlight your super skill. And don't be too much hyperbole about you. Oh, I did so many things. And a lot of people I see, their resume, if you see, it is like, oh my God. And still, if you're unemployed, it means half of things are a lie. 
So it should not happen that you, from the LinkedIn profile, you set up the expectation by the employer so high and you fall short maybe 10%. That is an even worse disaster. Rather than be more realistic and highlight your super skill. What's, how your super skill is actually able to kill any technical problem. If you see that and also highlight, okay, I have understanding about these technologies. You can always show how, what level of you have. And there is another thing about LinkedIn is that go to your scroll down at the bottom. There is a skill section over there. In the skill section, actually you can add a new, new skills. So keep your top skills on the top three section. So it, in that way, recruiters will be easy to find you. So that is a one more tip. I think uh, you should do it right now when you go to LinkedIn, scroll down to the bottom. There is a skill section when you go to edit and over there, you can add the skills. Write a headline, like, like follow these type of headlines, like say DevOps engineer, cloud migration, something like that. And something a little bit positive. And again, pretty much anything else is bad, right? And also I will say, don't be uh, uh, like uh, for LinkedIn strategy or anything, I will always say, you know, you should show your enthusiasm without hyperbole. Hyperbole is like too much. Too much of anything is not good. Pitch your skill, which is a primary skill, and also highlight how you know the basic concepts as well. Keep very short, like maximum five sentence, because if you put too big, nobody's going to read it. Believe me. Do you read anything nowadays? Why Twitter is so popular? Because Twitter has only one or two sentences. People don't have energy or anything to read anything, right? So same applies to pretty much everybody. Now the mistake number six, this is a very disaster. A lot of people do specifically for interview. I have done the same thing. So key success for interview that people think that you are judged on the interview, like on the technical skill. Of course, technical is there, but it's only the 50%. The 50% part of the interview of in-person interview is that to see if you are a likable person or not. Because most of your technical skill, they might have uh, checked using some written tests or hacker rank or some few technical rounds have been already done. Nowadays, mostly with automated way to see that person is technically capable or not. The interview they want to see first, are you a team player? Are you a likable person? Are you a helpful person? And second thing, how do you behave in certain stress? Are you not rude to your team members? These are the key qualities people are looking for. And the team member is why it is so important, specifically right now in a home from work from home situation. If you are not an effective communicator and team player, believe me, you will not be able to perform in a team. And I have seen people got a job and after two, one week, they have been fired in work from home setup because they just couldn't, they just couldn't get to that person. They couldn't understand what uh, he was talking and maybe he didn't have understanding of how to work in this environment. So these key skills they are looking for likability is the biggest thing and they will ask you a question and you have to reply in that way. So job offer when someone gives you is all about, will I be able to work with that person for 40 hours for next couple of years? Imagine that because when you're joining someone's team, it means you're going to spend 40 hours of week with your team members, either online way or physical way. So they want, you should be a likable person. I'm not saying you have to be clown or anything likable professionally. It means, there is a problem, you are there to help. And if you are in problem, you are also, of course, uh, open to ask about, uh, about help. But you shouldn't be asking help as a first line of defense. No, you should try everything from your end. If it doesn't work, then only you go there. So as I said, in the goal, always pitch your super skill, identify what company problem has and see how you can actually solve their technical or a business problem using your system. For example, you can say, uh, I can do, maybe you are very good with Python. You can say using Python, I can do automation. I can do a monitoring to help your system high availability. Or maybe if you know something about ELK, like a log stash or something, you can say how you can actually create the whole log aggregation for your organization and enhance, you can actually have better metrics. So these things you have to pitch. And if you are able to do these things, manager will think this guy or girl gets it. So idea is be likable, pitch your skill and get the job. So I guess I give a lot of tips and everything. Let's recap a little bit, right? Because I think I'm talking a lot and, and I, sometimes I talk a little bit fast. So I just want to recap what I did. So recap what it said, focus on your super skill. First thing, learn how to apply your skills to solve real technology or a business problem. Avoid futile internship, which doesn't add any value. Avoid resume blunders. 
build strong and likable online profile and be likable during the interview. So if you follow these things, these things I have learned from my mistake, these will right now, if you start applying, you could see a result 